Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, I'm going to be showing how these Sketch to Scale tools work. Here they are in their shortcut form, and we can find them under the Tools dropdown and Sketch to Scale. These four tools mimic the ones that are found under the markups. They're the Polyline, Rectangle, Ellipse, and Polygon tools, but this time we can draw them and set the parameters as we create them. Let's use the Polygon one first and let's place our first point right around here. Now we can set the exact length of our line, 10 feet, and then we can press tab to go to rotation, and we can set it to be a rotation of anything we'd like. Let's set it to 45 degrees and press enter. Now that line is being created. The next one is now ready to be created, and you must have, of course, a triangle at least to finish this tool. So let's make this next one at a negative angle. We're going to do 15 feet at negative 90, and this will go directly down. Now, at this point, if I move my mouse after pressing enter, then I'm forced to create my third line and then close afterwards. Right now, if I don't move my mouse and I press enter again, I can now automatically close the figure. Our polygon is created. Let's look at our second tool. We have the rectangle sketch to scale tool, and this one's quite interesting. We just click our first point, and now we can make either a rectangle or a square. To toggle between the two, you could just type in the values, but you can also hold shift, and now my width and height are matching each other as I move the square in and out. And if I press it again, I can now go back to rectangle mode. So let's put in a 20 foot width with a 15 foot height at a rotation of 30 degrees. Excellent, our rectangle, our rectangle, excuse me, is created and rotated properly. Let's go to our tools, back to sketch to scale, and let's look at the ellipse. The ellipse has two different modes. Right now it's in circle mode, so I can only put in the radius. So instead I'm gonna press shift, and then I'm gonna also press control. And control allows you to toggle between the two, but shift allows you to now go into ellipse mode. So I can make any kind of ellipse that I'd like. Let's make it a width of 50 feet, and we can make it a height of 25 feet. The rotation will leave it at zero, so we can just press enter and our ellipse is created and ready to be used. And let's look at our last one, probably my favorite sketch to scale tool, the polyline tool. This allows us to basically follow any path that we choose, especially if we know the dimensions and we can re recreate them very easily. So let's make a path. Let's start and end at our little square right here. So we're gonna start around here, let's go down I would say a good 20 feet should work. So we'll go 20 feet at a rotation of negative 90 to go straight down. And now if I wanna go straight left, I have two different ways. I can hold shift for a little while and now I've activated a ortho that basically sticks. So if I do this again with shift, now I can go and do any angle that I'd like. So, but let's use it. So I'm gonna hold shift for a little while until it activates. Now I can move my mouse all the way here. It looks like 70 feet is correct. So 70 feet, the rotation is fine. We don't have to worry about that. And now that we're done, and we are basically just using the line sketch to scale, I can once again press enter to finish. But let's say that I accidentally move my mouse and I say, you know what, I wanna finish it where my last point was. I'm just moving my mouse because I'm thinking as I draft. If I press enter twice, then you will have the third line wherever your mouse was. So that's okay with when it comes to this tool because what you can do is you can click on it and you can use the shift key to get rid of a grip. So I can hold shift and you'll see that there's a little minus sign next to my cursor. Now there's nothing, there's a minus sign. And if I move onto the line, it turns into a plus sign. So I can create more grips on this line if I wanted to and move them at will. Instead, I'm just going to get rid of these grips and now I have exactly what I wanted. This polyline with two lines connected and they each have parameters and when you go into properties, you can actually see a lot of different kinds of information about your parameters. For example, here it tells us that we can basically change, or we can see the total of both of our lines being at 90 feet. And if we look at the ellipse, we know how much square feet it takes up, how much, and then 300 square foot is within this rectangle, and we have 53 square feet inside of here. So this is quite useful when it comes to calculating square footage very quickly and doing it with parameters that you already have available to you. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Once again, I'm Ari, a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.